Less than two months left on the schedule, which teams will extend their seasons? One of the fathers of an ECHL franchise enters the league's Hall of Fame. Keep your eye on the puck. You don't know what you'll see on this edition of ECHL Week. Hi, and welcome to ECHL Week. Today, we come to you from First Arena in Elmira, New York, home of the Elmira Jackals. Just seven weeks remain in the regular season, so with every team down to its last 25 games, let's take a look at the playoff picture, keeping in mind that the division winners plus the next five best teams in each conference qualify for postseason play. Five teams already have at least 60 points in the Eastern Conference, paced by South Division leader Florida. South Carolina is making what seems to be its annual spring streak toward the top of the division, but catching the Everblades will be a stern test. Toledo looks in good shape at the top of the North Division, and Manchester is maintaining its East Division margin over Adirondack. The real drama should be for the last few playoff spots where seven teams are separated by just a dozen points. In particular, both Reading and Orlando have put more wins on the board over the last couple weeks. But if any of Atlanta, Elmira, Greenville, Wheeling, or Kalamazoo put a good streak together, a playoff spot would be realistic. Norfolk and Brampton have changed many players and turned things around after slow starts to the season, but they still have work to do if they want to make the postseason a reality. There's no question in anyone's mind that the league's best team so far has been Missouri. The Mavericks could have a playoff spot clinched by the end of the month, but what about the rest of the Western Conference? In the Midwest Division, the title is still up for grabs, although Fort Wayne has a lead and games in hand on Cincinnati. In the West, don't be surprised to see Utah and Idaho battle right to the end for an automatic top three seed in the playoffs first round. Defending Kelly Cup champ Allen also looks in pretty good shape to qualify for the postseason. But after that, Tulsa, Colorado, Indy, and Quad City are going to be in a battle, and two of those teams are likely to miss out on the Kelly Cup party. Alaska, Evansville, and Rapid City will really have to turn things around in order to play after the end of the regular season on April 9th. All playoff rounds are best of seven. We normally don't include specific highlights on ECHL week since there are so many good ones during the course of the season. But this one, an overtime save by Toledo's Jeff Lurg during the Walleye's recent victory over Fort Wayne, is just so spectacular it deserves a special look. Lurg made 37 saves in Toledo's 3-2 shootout win, but you'll have to look long and hard at any level of hockey to see a finer save than this. Three former Kalamazoo Wings and a pair of ex-Wheeling Nailers are among the most recent ECHL graduates to make their National Hockey League debuts. Three of the last nine to get to the show are goaltenders, and two of this group played their first NHL games with the Florida Panthers. It's possible that the number of former ECHL players to get to the National Hockey League could reach 600 by season's end. Hi, this is Terry Ryskowski of the Quad City Mallers, and you're watching ECHL Week. One of the ECHL's new teams is the Norfolk Admirals, a team which had played in the American Hockey League since 2000. We spoke with Admirals Vice President Joe Gregory to find out about this year's transition season. Tonight we have a post-game skate, so you know after the game's over, win or lose, the guys are going to come back out on the ice and skate with the fans for 45 minutes or so, and you know they'll be out there signing autographs and taking pictures. And um, you know my experience with that is you know win or lose, the guys are just great, especially with kids, and you know um, and I, that was something that I think when the Admirals left the ECHL to go to the American Hockey League, the fans missed. Because um, there's still accessibility, but not to the same level. And I think that's one of the main things the fans are anticipating and looking forward to, is getting that um, accessibility back. So it's uh, definitely uh, you know, a big, big bonus to being here in the ECHL. Luckily, we're in a great relationship with Edmonton, and I think we're in a unique relationship that um, you know not on, only are we on an AHL radar, but you know we're hands-on with Edmonton. Our first two home games, you know, Bill Scott from the Oilers, you know, was here. So, you know, we're not just some outpost a few thousand miles away from you know the big parent club. You know, we're on their everyday radar, and uh, you know, I'm lucky to be in a situation like that. You know, it's nice that we have some really great history in the ECHL. You know, if you look up in the rafters behind me here, you, you'll see you know, three league championships. Um, so it's nice that 
the fans here have some experience with the ECHL. Um, we had been away for a good amount of time, but it's good to be back and the league's changed. Uh, there's a, obviously a lot more teams in the league now and hockey itself has changed. So a um, bit of a feeling out process on that because I don't know if the fans expected what it was like in 1989 or what it was, you know, what it is today. But uh, all in all, it's going really well. We hear from another new ECHL Hall of Famer when ECHL Week continues. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean, separate, cook, and chill. The road tip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. Don't miss a minute of ECHL action. Subscribe now to ECHL.TV. Take advantage of live streaming on your phone, tablet, or computer, and never miss out on the action. No matter where you are. Catch every game from around the league. Relive your favorite team's great moments and big plays with full game replays and video on demand. Visit ECHL.TV now to sign up. If it's on, it's on ECHL.TV. Most party fouls, not a big deal. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Hi, this is Alex Guptill of the Manchester Monarchs, and you can tweet me at, at Alex Guptill. Time for a chat with one of the 2016 ECHL Hall of Fame inductees. Yeah, well, you look at the early years, and um, when you play three and three, the Sunday game was really not very good. Now these guys are in such great shape, and you know, the game on Sunday is no different than when you play on a Friday night, and it's, it's more about team than it ever was before because the individual skills are still there They're and in much uh, uh, greater supply but they don't show up as much because everybody's so uh, in tune to what they're doing out there. That's the legacy. Um, you know we have a kid that's um, playing in the American League that, that um, you know played hockey there. Uh, we've got a kid at Boston College right now who's a pretty good player uh, and these young kids coming up are as good as anybody in the country you know so uh, I hope I'm around to see some of them play in the NHL. I, I have no plans to retire. I love to play golf, but I couldn't do it seven days a week, and I got to be active. And this, is, like the, the running a hockey team, it, it's not work. You know, it's I, I get up and and you know you, my my family kids me because I'm talking about the team all the time. But uh, it's something that's on your mind, and it's just uh, I love the competition, and I don't know what I would do without it. The first game. You know, when uh, we actually delayed the start by about 40 minutes because there was so much traffic out and it rained. You know, November never rains in Florida. Of course, it rained that night. Uh, but to have every seat filled uh, was a real thrill. Um, and of course, winning the Kelly Cup was uh, was the icing on the cake. Um, and the when we had Elton John in the building uh, for the first con first real concert that we had there, uh, that was also a thrill. You know. And every night when you see people go out, whether we win or lose, people go out with smiles on their faces. Uh, you know, that never gets old either. When we first put the team together, I, I was thinking this was going to be kind of a semi-retirement job. Um, it hasn't proved to be that, but it's, it's, it's flown by. You know, it's 18 years, and uh, I still think I'm 40, so uh, it's just uh, a, a really amazing experience, and to have this happen today is something I'll cherish for the rest of my life. We start off our highlight games this week with a South Division battle. Towards the net again, so the Bears can change lines though, there won't be an icing here. Stolen in front, Rupert, a shot by Bradford, he scores! The point streak continues for Eric Bradford. Out ahead for Nunn, Nunn with some speed. Floats it towards center for Nesbitt. He pulls the trigger, shoots, and he scores! Tied game just like that. Derek Nesbitt gets Atlanta on the board. Register to Nunn at the circle, to Nesbitt. One-timer, puck rolling in, and the Gladiators score. Thomas Frazee appeared to have tipped that one. 
Meyer back to fly. His shot wide as he hammered that. Now Rollick at the left circle. Shoots and he scores! Rory Rollick ties the game at 2-2. His first goal as an Orlando Solar Bear. Head for Rodewald. Jordan the Russell Miller. Shoots and he scores! First career goal for Brandon Miller. And it gives the Solar Bears a 3-2 lead. Register. Whips one on. Puck still free, up for Bayer, now to Rodewald, ahead for McKinnis, he'll skate this one in for the empty netter, and he scores! Johnny McKinnis with the chest puck. He had to blow his whistle. Sylvester scores! Left wing faceoff circle to the blue line, he scores. Well, Ben Marshall let one fly from about five feet into the side of the blue line, and the game is now even at one. Long pass, Barnes a two on one over the blue line, has Courtney a pass for Courtney, he scores! He hesitates, wrist it to Graham at the point, flings it across, ice and score! Oh my gosh, Matt Fed, a heat seeking missile from the left point. It stretches twine, and the Mavericks a huge goal. They are up three to one. Leaves it to the blue line. A shot kicked out by Robinson. Bly fans on the rebound. And a score on the second opportunity. Defenseman Miskovic, Zach Miskovic, fires one home, and we have a one goal game. From Almira, New York, that wraps up another edition of ECHL Week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.